Welcome to Arthritis Now. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and July is Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. Click here to find out more about Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month and what you can do to help raise awareness. This month, we're going to be talking to Dr. Li Zhang from Tufts University and her work in cartilage repair. Hi, Dr. Zhang. Thank you so much for coming on Arthritis Now with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. Happy to be here. When did you receive your grant from the Arthritis National Research Foundation? It was from 2006 to 2007. What did it mean to you to be funded by ANRF at that time? Oh, it means so much to me. Um, so when I was a postdoc, um, my research area was cartilage biology, cartilage tissue biology. I was not studying cartilage regeneration or cartilage degeneration. So um, that made it really hard for me to get funding. With the seed money from the Arthritis National Research Foundation, I was able to get preliminary data. Eventually, I got a five-year NIH grant. Um, now the whole lab is devoted to arthritis research. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. And so, and so you were talking about your, you know, your cartilage research. Um, where, what, what did the grant specifically fund at that time? Oh, it was really funding on um, understanding the, uh, how cartilage is formed and how the cartilage can regenerate. We believe the process of cartilage regeneration and degeneration in arthritis are linked. So, for example, if one molecule that is involved in um, making cartilage better, it may also may be involved in maintaining cartilage. And if this molecule is not working, we may not have cartilage existing and we get cartilage degeneration, that is like in arthritis. So by understanding how these molecules work, we may be able to find ways to halt the degradation of cartilage and to slow down arthritis progression. How's your, you know, the scope of your research changed in any way over time? Yeah, so when it was, fund, uh, was funded, it was on cartilage uh, regeneration, and now we also have evolved toward cartilage degeneration. As I said, there is a link between cartilage formation, cartilage regeneration, and degeneration. The same molecules would be involved. We want to understand um, how these molecules work to halt arthritis progression. And then you were also, I think, studying like cartilage development as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? I was trying to find out ways uh, what's happening inside the tissue to make from a cell that is not specifically cartilage cells to become a cartilage cells. It turns out some of the molecules are involved in making cartilage is also involved in uh, maintaining the cartilage integrity. And now we are studying some of the signaling uh, components, uh, molecules, pathways that can alter the behavior of these cartilage tissues. And is there a specific uh, type of arthritis that you are looking at? Is it, you know, is it osteoarthritis, is it rheumatoid, or is it just kind of the broad spectrum of the disease? We're more uh, looking at uh, osteoarthritis. What are your goals? Like, where do you see your research going? Where would you like it to see it go in the next five or ten years? I would like to see um, uh, new ways to halt arthritis progression and to identify new targets for arthritis treatment. And also, we're developing ways to monitor arthritis progression, so which would provide as a platform for monitoring treatment options. And are there any specific targets that you found recently in your lab that you can tell us about? Well. We are working on different molecules that, at this moment, um, uh, one of the uh, molecules we're working on is actually um, an antibiotic called erythromycin. And we found erythromycin has a, a when you introduce uh, to the cartilage cells, it prevents um, inflammatory condition induced um, degeneration. We're excited to. Uh, understand why that works. Thanks for watching our interview with Dr. Zhang. 
Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out curearthritis.org to see all the ways that you can get involved to help raise awareness for Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month.